everyone. Happy Saturday. My name is Michelle and I work at the San Mateo County Library. We're so excited you could join us for family story time. All right, I'm going to go ahead and do the super loud portion of our program where we have our trusty tambourine. Chicken. 
All righty. All right. So let's go ahead and read our very first book. Let's see. We have Grandfather's Journey by Alan Say. Let's see. Here we go. All righty. Can make it big. There we go. Grandfather's Journey by Alan Say. And I'm using this. And I borrowed the book on Access 360. So you can use that as our e-resource to check out books at home. Alrighty. This is a Caldecott winning book, which meant it won for best picture book illustrations um, in the past. So take a look at the illustrations and adore them with me. My grandfather was a young man when he left his home in Japan and went to see the world. He wore European clothes for the first time and began his journey on a steamship. The Pacific Ocean astonished him. For three weeks, he did not see land. When land finally appeared, it was the new world. He explored North America by train and riverboat and often walked for days on end. Deserts with rocks like enormous sculptures amazed him. The endless farm fields reminded him of the ocean he had crossed. Huge cities of factories and tall buildings bewildered and yet excited him. <coughs> Excuse me. Achoo. Excuse me. He marveled at the towering mountains and rivers as clear as the sky. He met many people along the way. He shook hands with black men and white men, with yellow men and red men. The more he traveled, the more he longed to see new places and never thought of returning home. Of all the places he visited, he liked California best. He loved the strong sunlight there, the Sierra Mountains, and the lonely sea coast. After a time, he returned to his village in Japan to marry his childhood sweetheart. Then he brought his bride to the new country. They married, excuse me, they made home by the San Francisco Bay and had a baby girl. As his daughter grew, my grandfather began to think about his own childhood. He thought about his old friends. He remembered the mountains and rivers of his home. He surrounded himself with songbirds, yeah, but, but, but he could not forget. Finally, when his daughter was nearly grown, he could wait no more. He took his family and returned to his homeland. Once again, he saw the mountains and rivers of his childhood. They were just as he had remembered them. Once again, he exchanged stories and laughed with his old friends. But the village was not a place for a daughter from San Francisco. So my grandfather bought a house in a large city nearby. There, the young woman fell in love, married, and sometime later, I was born. When I was a small boy, my favorite weekend was a visit to my grandfather's house. He told me many stories about California. He raised warblers and silver rays, but he could not forget the mountains and rivers of California. So he planned a trip. But a war began. Bombs fell from the sky and scattered our lives like leaves in a storm. When the world and when the war, excuse me, when the war ended, there was nothing left of the city and the house where my grandparents had lived. So they returned to the village where they had been children. But my grandfather never kept another songbird. 
The last time I saw him, my grandfather had said that he longed to see California one more time. He never did. And when I was nearly grown, I left home and went to see California for myself. After a time, I came to love the land my grandfather had loved, and I stayed on and on until I had a daughter of my own. But I also miss the mountains and rivers of my childhood. I miss my old friends. So I return now and then when I cannot, when I cannot still the longing in my heart. The funny thing is, the moment I am in one country, I am homesick for the other. I think I know my grandfather now. I miss him very much. The end. I'm sure your grandparents or great great grandparents or even your parents have a story about coming to America. You should probably ask them about it and they might be willing to tell you. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and sing. Go ahead and get our wheels out. The wheels on the bus go round and round, round and round, round and round. The wheels on the bus go round and round, all through the town. What else is on the bus? Let's see. Mm. The doors on the bus go open and shut, open and shut, open and shut. Doors on the bus go open and shut all through the town. The money on the bus goes clink, 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 clink. The money on the bus goes clink, clink, clink all through the town. The driver on the bus says, Move on back, move on. Move on back, the driver on the bus says, move on back, all through the town. The people on the bus go up and down, up and down, up and down. The people on the bus go up and down, all through the town. The librarian! If I saw you on the bus, I'd be so excited, and I would tell you that I was excited and that you should come visit us. All right, I might not, I probably want to tell you to do this, but it fits the song. The librarian on the bus says, read a book, read a book, read a book. The librarian on the bus says, read a book, all through the town. Excellent. All right, we made it to the library. And now we're going to talk about some emotions. We're going to sing If You're Happy and You Know It. All right, if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. Excellent. What are some other things you can do if you're happy? Yeah, you can shout hooray. Let's do that one. If you're happy and you know it, shout hooray, hooray. If you're happy and you know it, shout hooray, hooray. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, shout hooray, hooray. Great job. Sometimes we might not be feeling happy. We don't have to feel happy all the time. You could feel mad. Mm, you're so mad. What could you do when you're feeling mad? You could stomp your feet. That's right. Let's stomp our feet. If you're mad and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're mad and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're mad and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're mad and you know it, stomp your feet. Stomp, stomp. Sometimes we're not happy or mad. It's totally fine to feel the feelings you are feeling, but it's important to be able to tell people how you're feeling. So, sometimes we're sad. And if you're sad, what could you do? Yep, I would cry boo-hoo. But before you cry, maybe tell somebody that you're sad. Because when you cry, it's hard to understand you. All right. If you're sad and you know it, cry boo-hoo. 
boo-hoo. If you're cry, sad and you know it, cry boo-hoo, boo-hoo. If you're sad and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're sad and you know it, cry boo-hoo, boo-hoo. All righty. Let's end on a happy note. What else can we do if we're happy? Hmm. We'll wiggle and waggle. How about that? If you're happy and you know it, wiggle and waggle. Wiggle, waggle. If you're happy and you know it, wiggle and waggle. Wiggle, waggle. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, wiggle and waggle. Wiggle, waggle. Excellent. All righty. Let's move on to another book. This one is about food, and you all know I love food. Okay. So, let me share our screen. Here we go. It is called Amy Wu and the Perfect Bow by Kat Jong, illustrated by Charlene Chua. And this one, I am accessing, using Access 360 as well. This book might make you hungry. All right, or it might inspire you to make something today after story time. So we have Amy Wu and the Perfect Bow. Um, okay, here are the end papers. It's talking, it's letting us know how to pronounce bow. Alrighty, this is read for you with permission from Aladdin. Amy Wu and the Perfect Bow. Amy can do a lot of things. She can brush her teeth. She can tie her shoe. She can even do both at once, sort of. But there's one thing Amy cannot, cannot do. She cannot make the perfect bow. Sometimes they come out too small and sometimes they come out too big. Sometimes she adds too much filling, sometimes not enough, and sometimes they fall apart before they reach her mouth. Amy's mom and dad make perfect bow. So does her grandma. Their bow are soft and fluffy and so, so delicious. Amy could eat them all day, and sometimes she does. Today, Amy is going to do it. She's going to make the world's most perfect bow. Bow making is an all day event. Amy's dad starts in the morning mixing together the ingredients for the dough. Then it's time to knead, knead, knead. He pushes the dough, he punches the dough. Amy gives it a try too. They leave the dough to rise. Amy keeps an eye on it just in case. It grows bigger and bigger and even bigger. Amy's dad squishes the dough down just in time. He rolls it into a log and cuts it into pieces. Meanwhile, Amy's mom seasons meat for the filling. There's garlic, and mushrooms, pepper, salt, and ginger. Amy's first bow turns out a little funny. So does the second. It's hard to know how much filling to add. Too little and the bow is sad and empty. Too much and oops. It's also hard to pinch the bow shut just right. Pinch, 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 pinch. Amy watches her mom make a perfect bow. She watches her dad make a perfect bow. And her grandma, too. They all try to teach her. Roll out the dough like this, says Amy's dad. Use just enough filling, says Amy's mom. Pinch, 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 says Amy's grandma. But Amy's bow just aren't the same. They're too empty or too fat. They have holes in them. 
the leak. Maybe today will be the day after all. Maybe Amy just can't make a perfect bow. Then Amy has an idea. The pieces of dough were cut for grown-up hands, but Amy's hands are very small. A Amy's grandma cuts each piece of dough into two smaller pieces, Amy-sized pieces. Now they fit perfectly in Amy's paws. Carefully, Amy rolls the dough so it's thicker on the inside and thinner at the edges. She adds just the right amount of filling. She pinch, pinch, pinches it shut. And there it is, Amy's perfect bow. She makes another and another and even more after that. She's a bow making master. Soon all the dough and filling are gone. Everyone is tired, but they're not done yet. Amy's grandma boils a big pot of water. It's time to steam the bow. Amy keeps an eye on the steamer, just in case. All her perfect bow and all the imperfect ones too are snug inside. The bow are done! Amy's mom lifts the lid off the steamer. Whoosh! Out comes a puff of steam. Amy can't see anything at all. The steam clears. There are Amy's perfect bow. They're not too small. They're not too big. They have just the right amount of filling and they do not leak. They are soft and fluffy and so, so delicious. Amy eats one, then another. Then she eats one of the not so perfect bow. And you know what? It tastes just as good. There. Amy is at school. She brought some bow to share with her classmates. The end. And there is Amy's family recipe to make bow. Whew. Now I am super hungry and want to make that. That looks so delicious and yummy. Okay. Are there any family recipes that you make with your family? You can, or special family recipes that you make with your family. You can ask your grown-ups for help or to show you how to make them. All right, we're going to do patty cake because I'm in the mood for some making. Patty cake, patty cake, baker's man. Bake me a cake as fast as you can. Roll it and mark it with the L for librarian and me. <laughs> All right, let's do it again. Patty cake, patty cake, baker's man. Make me a cake as fast as you can. Roll it and press it and mark it with a, what, shout out whatever letter your name starts with. And mark it with the M for Michelle and me. All righty, that book didn't make you hungry. I don't know what will. All right, let's see. Oh, we got to practice our counting today. So let's do our shark song. We've moved on from fishies to sharks. And we're going to start at number one. And let's see. Let's start with yellow. We'll have one little, little yellow shark. And so when we sing this song, we're going to sing bobble, bobble, pop. And so when we say bubbles, you can make little bubbles with your hands. And then you can pop the bubble by clapping your hands and jumping up if you'd like. All right. One little yellow fish swimming through the water, swimming through the water, swimming through the water. One little yellow fish swimming through the water. Bubble, 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 pop. Good job. What number comes after one? Yeah, that's right. Two. Two little orange fish swimming through, oh, not fishies, sharks. Two little orange 
shark swimming through the water, swimming through the water, swimming through the water. Two little orange sharks swimming through the water. Bubble, 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 pop. Great job. What number comes after two? Show me on your hands. That's right. Three. We're going to do, hmm, what color? Let's do green. Three little green sharks swimming through the water, swimming through the water, swimming through the water. Three little green sharks swimming through the water, bubble, 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 pop. Okay, what number comes after three? That's right, four. And let's do pink. Four little pink sharks swimming through the water, swimming through the water, swimming through the water. Four little pink sharks swimming through the water, bubble, 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 pop. Great job. What number comes after four? That's right, five. And let's do rainbow, 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 rainbow. Five little rainbow sharks swimming through the water swimming through the water swimming through the water five little rainbow sharks swimming through the water bubble 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 pop great job great job okay are we ready for shape time okay let's see Ooh, should we try a shape we haven't done yet let's try it so I'm gonna ask, I'm gonna sing, do you know what shape this is, twice. You can answer me the first time, but I'm gonna sing it twice. So you can wait if you want. Do you know what shape this is? What shape this is? What shape this is? Do you know what shape this is? I'm holding in my hand. That's right, it's a diamond. Great job. Alrighty. Do you know what shape this is? What shape this is? What shape this is? Do you know what shape this is? I'm holding in my hand. Louder! Yeah, it's a triangle. Great job. A triangle has three sides. Great job. Alrighty, let's see. What else do we have? Do you know what shape this is? What shape this is? What shape this is? Do you know what shape this is? I'm holding in my hand. That's right, it's a square. All right, oh, let's go over what colors they are. We have a, what color diamond is that? A blue diamond. We have a, yellow square we have a green triangle that's right all right let's do oh i don't think we've done this one in a while do you know what shape this is what shape this is what shape this is do you know what shape this is i'm holding in my hand yes if you said star you are right we have a what color star? A yellow star. That's right. Oh man, how many shapes do we have on the board? One, two, three, four. We have four shapes on the board. Should we do one more? Okay, let's do one more. Do you know what shape this is? What shape this is? What shape this is? Do you know what shape this is? I'm holding in my hand. Mm-hmm, that's right, it's a heart. Oop, can't see that, let's put it up higher. There you go, it's a heart, a red heart. All right, thanks so much for practicing shapes with me. We'll say goodbye to them, and we'll move on to Zoom, Zoom, Zoom. Let's put our hands together and we're gonna do this three times. If you have a little one, feel free to put them on your lap. If you have a stuffy that you wanna bring with you to the moon, go 
go ahead and get them. All right, we're gonna start down low. Zoom, 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 we're going to the moon. Zoom, 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 we're going to the moon. If you want to take a trip, climb aboard my rocket ship. Zoom, 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 we're going to the moon in five, four, three, two, one, blast off! Let's do it again. Zoom, 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 we're going to the moon. Zoom, 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 we're going to the moon. If you want to take a trip, climb aboard my rocket ship. Zoom, 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 we're going to the moon. Five, four, three, two, one, blast off! Great job. One more time, one more time. Zoom, 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 we're going to the moon. Zoom, 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 we're going to the moon. If you want to take a trip, climb aboard my rocket ship. Zoom, 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 we're going to the moon in five, four, three, two, one, blast off! Great job. We're in the stars now. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Up above the world so high like a diamond in the sky twinkle twinkle little star how i wonder what you are excellent thank you so much for tuning in for saturday family story time stay stay on at 11 we'll have kelly with crafts in Spanish. Have a good rest of your day, my friends.